What's up everybody? Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net. And behind me here, you can see a beautiful 2003 Cadillac DeVille. Car that I showed you, I feel like not too long ago, but it has been. Uh, I've had a few hiccups in the last few weeks and I'm just glad to be standing here right now, to be honest with you. Uh, not to be over dramatic, but I'll tell you what happened to me again. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm gonna bring you this beautiful 2003 Cadillac DeVille. I showed you this car as it came in with all the stuff in it. Uh, that grandma and grandpa left in it when their kids traded it in and they got roasted in the comments for being mean to old people Anyways, I hope you take a look at this car and tell me if I did a, a, a Justice to this car because this car absolutely gleams give you a little bit of hint right there But I'm gonna go around and tell you all about it and I'll tell you which organ is no longer inside my body right now <laughs> But let's get into this 2003 Cadillac DeVille and here she is a beautiful 17,000 miles 2003 Cadillac Sedan DeVille, finished in a beautiful white diamond. Classic Cadillac color, really. And then this color combination is also a classic color combo for Cadillac. Uh, white over navy blue leather, and then in this case, a navy blue canvas top. This car just spits. Old school Cadillac, but kind of modern Cadillac, if you will. Now these DeVilles, 2000 to 2005 DeVilles, you used to see these things everywhere. Now you barely even see the DTSs. Um, I, you know, I can't really even believe that this car is 20 years old, being a two, 2003 model year. Um, but it's a timeless car, it really is. Uh, these cars were just well built. I actually kind of prefer this body style over the newer DTSs. I think this is a nicer car. Uh, versus the post bailout era Cadillac, but I like the styling of the, the newer ones. It's it's a give or take But this car all dressed up. That's exactly how I like these cars. You can see full blue canvas top uh, It's got the chrome luggage rack love it or hate it um, I did some touch-ups or not touch-ups, but dress up things to this car that I think really really put it over the edge uh, white wall tires with a chrome lower trim on the bottom of the doors uh, and then I also added that old school Sedan DeVille emblem you'll see up on the front door. I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, but this car just absolutely dazzles. 17,000 mile car, one owner car, phenomenal, phenomenal survivor this car is. Um, you just don't see them like this anymore. And in color, in trim, this is, this is it. If this was just a plain white DeVille with really nothing going for it, I wouldn't be as excited. That's how much I love the gingerbread added to these cars. Uh, but if you remember back to my video when I got this thing in, I mean, just the chrome wheels themselves, they, you know, they probably had 17,000 miles worth of uh, caked on brake dust. I don't want to say the older folks who had this car didn't take care of it because they did. I just don't think they were the type that got out and every time they drove it, you know, got a Q-tip and cleaned the wheels or, or stuff like that. I mean, the car was clean. It was just driven and parked in the garage. And um, I found some service records in it. They did drive this car back and forth to Florida. Uh, so in all this time, I can't imagine them driving it, you know, more than a lot of highway miles with 17,000 going back from upstate New York to um, Florida with this car. And this car definitely fits in Florida. You can see with the blue canvas top, and even still has their um, barcode sticker for their gated community. I believe they're in the Fort Lauderdale area, uh, if I remember correctly. But this car is just dressed, 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 and I absolutely love everything about this car. There's nothing that I would change. There's nothing, I don't think there's really anything more I'd add to it. Um, I think the car is just done so perfectly uh, with all the trim on it. Uh, but like I was saying before, just cleaning up those wheels, you can see how they just absolutely shine. The paint, the cloth top is in phenomenal shape. Uh, one thing I did order, but I didn't end up putting on was the stainless pillar trim. I do have it. So somebody who is looking to buy this car, they want that on there, I'll put it on. It's a six piece set. Um, I did put the lower door trim kit on it eight pieces i don't like putting the pieces on the front and rear bumpers i think that is kind of over overdoing it a little bit 
Um, but then I also did this. And let me know what you think down in the comments. This is a Sedan DeVille emblem. I did it on both sides. These are brand new, new old stock Sedan DeVille. It's the old school Sedan DeVille script from like your 80s into the early 90s. And essentially they stopped calling these cars Sedan DeVilles, even though that's what it is. You know, this model, it's technically called a DeVille. But the Sedan DeVilles, they stopped calling them that back in the early 90s because they still offered a Coupe DeVille. So you either got a Coupe DeVille or a Sedan DeVille. Um, and I love these, these cars dressed up with the aftermarket ENG Vintage Edition kit, like my dad's previous two. And they had old school scripts like that on the cars. They were on the, uh, I think one of them had it on the quarter and one of them had it on the door with the old um, V style emblems. Uh, so just a little throwback to that. You can't get that ENG kit anymore, but I really like that old school script and emblem on the car. So that's why I did that. I think it just gives it just enough old school classic touch. Uh, if you don't like them, if you're the buyer of this car, you don't like that. I can peel those off pretty easily. Like I said, I just put them on uh, so they're fresh, the adhesive's fresh, but I just think they, they really add to it. But anyways, um, we'll go around, we'll do some details on this car. I mean, this car is like just an absolute cherry all the way around. Um, garage, no question about that. Loved, you know, well cared for. Sedan DeVille. I think I, I really like that. But let me know what you think down in the comments. I, I asked all my friends and close customers who, you know, I, I would bounce things off of occasionally. And all but one said do it. So uh, <laughs> most said yay. Uh, but let's go around this car. I'm going to show you just a few little marks here. I got my pointer uh, ready. You can see here the cloth top on this car is an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal shape. Navy blue canvas. Um, just absolutely gorgeous. Look at the stitching and the seam, like around the rear window. Usually the first place that these tops start to fail. Uh, absolutely perfect. It's still got that nice kind of sheen to it. I don't know if you can kind of pick up what I'm laying down on that, but it's, it's got that nice fabric-y look where you can tell it was protected. It hasn't been out in the sun, you know, baking away. These tops do deteriorate. The cloth, I think, lasts longer. But being out in the sun, they'll fade. They start to get that weathered look. And if you get close up on it, you can just see the texture of the material is in phenomenal shape. Uh, even when they did the top on this, they put these older style uh, caddy emblems on. Not uncommon to see they use just something off the shelf. Uh, but this style, 2003, had the newer style emblem. Um, so there's a little bit of a vintage kick there. But obviously somebody was going for the classic look with the luggage rack, with the top. You know, so beautiful painted stripe. This car just ties together so nice. <laughs> Anyways, uh, beautiful canvas on this car. Some of you guys might be wondering about my health situation. Uh, I will tell you that a little later on in the video. I didn't want to bore you with that instead of showing you this beautiful Cadillac. So once we get in, on, on the road, I'll tell you about what happened. Uh, but you can see here, real clean. I'm kind of losing track of where I was. I started back here, and here I am all the way up in the front again. Anyways, we'll start back here. Beautiful canvas top. I said that, yes. Uh, come down the body, the quarter, even the corners of the bumpers. I mean, just very, very faint, like very minor stuff. Uh, LED taillights. 2000 was the first year. Cadillac was the first car manufacturer to do all LED taillights. I remember there was like a a time difference between having all LED versus like regular bulbs. Um, and Cadillac kind of touted it as a safety thing. Now it's like everybody does LED, uh, but that was kind of cool. The Cadillac was the first, you know, door edges, absolutely clean and beautiful. Gas lid, all the glass in this car is in beautiful shape. Real straight, real clean. Just a really well-loved car. I did four brand new white wall tires on this car, uh, four new TPMS sensors while I was in there. Driver's door, you can see nice and straight. All the door edging is in beautiful shape. Very, very minor wear mark right there. But 
as far as chips and stuff. This is probably one of the worst marks on the car, a very small scratch. And the paint there on the door. Uh, the door strip, the rub strip is in nice shape. Mirrors show really well, just a couple little minor faint marks, uh, you know, being super particular. This car does have the original, I believe these are PPG glass, um, but how you can tell it's original, you can see someone did VIN etching there, but then it also has the GM Cadillac roadside assistance phone number right there, right over the VIN number on these cars, which I thought was always kind of cool that Cadillac did that. Coming back down the side here, real clean, straight, no dings. Little itty bitty guy right there. And look how beautiful those wheels shined up. I know underneath that dust, these wheels are gonna shine up so nice. Brand new white wall tires really makes this car pop. The black walls on this car just really did not do this car any justice. Once I did the wheels and tires, uh, this car just stood real tall. Come around, even the front bumper has the traditional Cadillac cornering lamps, beautiful halogen headlights. Look how clear those headlights are. That mark that you see there is actually in the, you know, the, the mold. That's not a scratch. Some people could kind of think that was a scratch, but it's not. Come across the hood. These hoods are aluminum. A lot of times you see a little bit of aluminum corrosion going on there. Absolutely none on the hood here. It's like a minor little chip of paint right there. See the coloring on the stand-up hood ornament. These are known to wash out. Beautiful shape, obviously garage. Front bumper, nice and clean. Now a few minor little road chips here and there, but very, very nice. Tri-stage pearl paint. Has a traditional egg crate grill. Beautiful lens on this side. Again, even the lenses for the cornering lights are in phenomenal shape. Uh, yeah, PPG glass, original Cadillac windshield, real, real clean. And look at those beautiful wheels. These wheels cleaned up very, very nicely in all the spokes. Like I said, four brand new tires. I really like this Maxxis brand tire. Um, you know, sometimes I get people in the comments that be like, oh, you should have put Michelin's on. You should have put this on. Michelin doesn't make a white wall in this size anymore. They used to, the symmetry, and they were really good tires. I'll give them credit. So today for 225 60, 16, you have only a few options. You have this Maxxis brand. Um, you have the Travel Star brand, which is the same ones I put on the town cars, the 17 inch ones, um, but they sell them in a 16 inch. And then they have Continental, and you would think Continental were the best. But price point, these are $200 less, and I'm not putting these on because they're $200 less, believe me. I've bought plenty of Continentals. But having so many sets, these tires balance out so beautifully, and the white walls stay so white, and they're the perfect width, where the Continentals are actually just a little narrower, and they kind of look a little funny. I think if Continental widened them up a little bit, but even those, I don't think jump as, as well as these do. And I'll let you compare the white wall because I did put a new set of Continentals on that 97 town car with 4,000 miles that is going to be coming up for sale real soon. Um, and you'll see what I mean with the width of the white wall. They have a really nice tread pattern. Um, I've had great luck with these tires. You know, I know they're an off-brand tire, but quality... I think these are actually better than the Continentals. That's just my opinion. Light me up in the comments. Tell me I'm an idiot when it comes to tires, whatever you want to say. Um, but that's how I feel. Anyways, coming around this side, beautiful blue canvas and all the stitching. Top of the windshield frame, top of the doors, um, the wind lace back here. This is the antenna for the OnStar, kind of the old school cell phone looking antenna. Come back down the side of this and see how nice and straight this is. I mean, just absolutely perfect. No chips and dings in the doors. Beautiful blue painted stripe. Look at how clean inside the wheel wells are. This is the first spot these things start to rust out as you'll see them in here. Start to get a discoloration, especially on the DTS model. 
the way that they made the panel there, you really start to see those rust out there. Um, but I mean, this car is just absolutely near out of the wrapper. Very minor paint transfer scuff there. That'll probably come out. Down on the bumper here. Perfect corners on the bumper. It does have this small little scratch in the tail light that's like on the surface. It does have the aftermarket luggage rack. Love it or hate it, it's there. Um, it's in really, really nice shape. All the trim here it gives it that old school look. You know, you could take it off. You have a ton of holes under there to fill in, or you have to get another deck lid essentially. But leave it on it doesn't leak it looks great in my opinion i know some people are going to think it's tacky but you know again this is the times where people bought these cars and they wanted that old school look so they did stuff like this this is totally non-functional like you couldn't put luggage on here and you wouldn't see somebody put luggage on here you know it's like the top people advertise this stuff as like you know just dress up things uh, not really a functional, like there was no reason for grandma or grandpa to put a top on this car other than the looks. LED brake lights sold new at Kaiser Cadillac or Kaiser. I mean, just look, look at how nice the tips are on this car. It has a quad tipped exhaust. I really love it. Um, all right, let's go on to the inside of this car. I love the inside of this too, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. All right, pulled it up into the shade here. Now let's take a look on the inside. Now, two things I absolutely adore about this particular Cadillac DeVille, this year for one of those things in this generation, for another one is the interior color, um, blue, navy blue. I mean, again, it was common to see back then in the, you know, throughout the 90s, uh, but this was kind of the end of the line. They did bring blue into the new body style DTS. I think maybe for 06. I know for at least one year. I don't know if it went into 07. Uh, but you didn't really see it as common as you did in this vintage. So to get a white car with a navy blue gut or interior gut is what car guys sometimes said. Um, it, it's, you know, it's a classic Cadillac color combo that you don't see anymore. You know, everything today is black, beige or gray like that's it um i actually just got a 99 buick park avin that's white with like a burgundy leather which is phenomenal i just it, it's absolutely beautiful to have those old school colors so i love the fact that it's blue um that you don't see often even in these you saw a lot more shale um the oatmeal black light gray the navy blue i think was the only like color out of that um they didn't offer burgundy in these cars i don't think they really offered anything else no greens or anything like that but then um this is a proven fact that 03 was the last year of the good comfortable seats especially for big big guys like myself um cadillac offered these with heated seats 04 05 of this generation heated and cooled seats and if you sit in an 00 to 03 with this style seat. I mean, you can even just see how comfortable it is. Then you get into an 0405 with the perforated heated and cooled leather. The heated and cooled feature is, is great, don't get me wrong, but the seats are much harder. This is plush all the way throughout. Uh, really fits nicely. You just kind of sink into it like that old school Cadillac feel where the 0405, they're kind of harder, they're flatter. It's the same seat, it just, with that heated and cooled function, it kind of loses some of its comfort. Um, and that, I think, was a bad trade-off. So, I don't know. That's why I really like this car. Um, it's the last year of this interior. It's navy blue. Anyways, we'll show you all the bits and pieces. Real clean in the jams here. What do we got? 52506. This car had 6,187 miles. And for a Kaiser Brothers Cadillac oil change look at how clean like the, the latches are not all gummed up real clean door sill uh you know area all the gaskets I and mean, even the gaskets are blue blue felt gaskets 
Uh, whoever had this car definitely made sure the hinges were saturated with white lithium grease. That's on all four doors. Usually I try to clean that off, but you know, it's usually gummed up with dirt and debris, but this is actually clean, but I, I knew it would have made a mess, but real clean jams otherwise. You can see here, beautiful blue uh, interior paneling. You know, no abnormal wear or anything like that. All your switches, everything's blue. The switches are blue, the panels are blue. You know, the, the weather strip is blue. Blue, 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 blue. But again, old school, has a little map pocket here. You have your heated seat uh, function. Uh, if these cars have the air conditioning seat, it's the same button, just as an additional button right here for your air conditioning. Has your easy exit seat feature with two-way memory window uh, switches like I said uh, before uh, then you come into the interior here we'll zoom this out just a little bit get your nice dash pad uh, steering wheel 0304 also came with the heated steering wheel function so that's one thing that 03 didn't have but again in my opinion the trade-off for the comfort of the seats is worth it we'll show you some of the details up here uh, in just a few minutes you can see here carpeting is in really nice shape aside from some crumbs that I dropped off when I pulled the uh, paper mat out. Uh, one thing I always thought was cool, underneath these seats here you can see this tray. It's kind of like a tray you can put, I don't know, a wet umbrella in or something like that. Actually if you tilt this up you can kind of see a little bit more. It looks like I forgot to vacuum a few little crumbs out of there but uh, dual uh, power seats, power forward, back, up, down, power, recline. Then you have a four-way lumbar setting. Leather on this car is in really, really nice shape. Uh, nice and soft throughout. Does have your adjustable uh, headrests in the front. This is a six passenger. So these cars, the DeVilles and the DHSs, all were six passenger. Where the DTS would have come with the floor shifter. So with this, you get the center console here with the coin holder, a little spot where you can put your Frank Sinatra cassettes. Uh, there's two Frank Sinatra cassettes that come with this car. In here is a little hidden storage compartment. Uh, it actually works well to hide the center uh, seat belt. That folds down and then this guy folds out for your center cup holders. Similar to the town cars, uh, actually. Uh, but really, really clean throughout there. The doors close. They have a nice kind of solid, you know, it's not like a 90 brome where you can like hear the metal, but a real nice solid sounding door um, on these Era DeVilles. Nice and clean. Look at how clean that is. And I didn't even clean that. That's how this car came in. I, I just wiped these jams from dust. Um, I didn't have to go crazy pressure washing or anything like that. Some of the original quality control stickers. Now you can see just from looking at that latch, probably how many times this door has been opened and closed. Uh, this car, you know, I hate to sound like your typical salesman in this case, but I very, very highly doubt more than a handful of people actually rode in the backseat of this car. Um, just with the freshness of the car. The mileage, most of the mileage was put on earlier in this car's life. I think they drove it back and forth to Florida a few times, had it down in Florida, uh, and then later flew back and forth and kept this car uh, either in Florida or upstate New York, I think upstate New York. Heated rear seats as well on this car. You have side airbags, your rear um, map pockets. You know, take a look how nice the carpeting is throughout navy blue carpeting back seat nice and soft just as comfortable as the front seats really it does have the child seat acres back there come around to the passenger side get real real clean throughout this car this car is really, you know, a time capsule. Um, it, it's hard to find these cars in this condition anymore. You know, as well loved and well cared for as this one. 
These are always like new. No one ever puts anything back here. Nobody sits back here. It does have a pass through to get into the trunk or to feed any extra passengers you might have back there. Has your rear climate control as well. Again, look at that carpeting. Really nice, real clean, beautiful leather. You know, absolutely fresh. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Again, a little bit of white lithium grease in those hinges, but Grandpa wanted to make sure his door hinges ever wore out, I guess. Door panel. Really clean, heated seats. Dash pad, real nice shape. Usually these things start to warp up. Uh, this one's in really great shape. Again, that traditional six passenger seating. Passenger seat, again, shows just as nice. You have dual power, split bench, with the adjustable headrests. Uh, we'll dive on in and I'll uh, show you some of the features. Pop the hood, pop the trunk, of this time capsule, 17,000 mile, 2003 to build. Then we'll take it for a spin. All right, so we're in this Whew, beautifully air-conditioned Cadillac. You can see it's 88 degrees outside. It's actually gonna get hotter tomorrow, Wednesday, which is the day you're gonna see this video. I don't even know if I'll be working that day. I've been kind of trying to take it easy after surgery and um, not looking forward to being in 95 degree heat in my shop, but we'll see. I got a lot of cars to get through. Anyways, I'll tell you all about that in a little bit. Uh, I'd like to show you right now what I got for keys. Now, when I got this car in, I told you, I was going to make an extra set. I haven't been able to get there, but I have an appointment tomorrow to go get another remote and a master key. So this car will come with two original keys, two remotes, and then the valet key you can see here. Um, other stuff I have with this car, this little box came the uh, owner's manual um, with your notepad, your pen, the DeVille uh, personalization guide. Um, this is for the aftermarket sunroof, single touch sunroof, operating guide, sole air, sunroof. Uh, that's a, I think a model of Wabasto, yeah. Big name in aftermarket sunroofs. Uh, and that works perfectly. Owner's manual, uh, like I said, um, this is, I thought this was cool. This is from the original selling dealer, Kaiser Cadillac or Kieser. Um, it's kind of a service thing. It tells you about getting their, your car service there. Um, and then this is just one service record from way back in the car's life. But I found it tucked in the glove box. Um, there was something about driving the car back in. This was 2009. The car had 15,000 miles on it. So they really did put most of the miles earlier in this car's life. Uh, yeah, customer states that the check engine light came on for a history code of a crank sensor. Um, inspect the airlines, alignment. Um, perform brake caliper service. Oil change. This is all back in 2009 at the dealer who sold it new. Now, I did go through this car. And I did throw away a lot of the stuff that was in the car, but I did keep uh, a few things here, including a Frank Sinatra cassette, uh, the emergency poncho, a Comfort Inn notepad. Need a room tomorrow night? Call. Probably got that on their way back and forth from Florida. And then uh, the rain bonnet uh, for any little old lady who might buy this car from me. Includes a free rain bonnet. And this is the heritage emblem that was on the grill showing that this was their fourth Cadillac. I don't really care for this style heritage emblem, so that's why I took it off, but I did include it. It's in the glove box in case you want to put it back on. Just a wing nut on the back here. All right, so now let's pop the hood, pop the trunk, and we're gonna show you what all that is about. Coming around back to the trunk here, you can see a real spacious trunk in these Sedan Devils, uh, which is, Another cool find. 
this is another cool find i should say this is the front license plate filler for these cars so um cadillac had these that they pop right into the front license plate section kind of give it more of a flush look in the event that you didn't need it to have two plates in the car um these are the original floor mats front and rear under here you have your original uh, yeah, spare tire just lost the pointer little cubby there but you can see real clean emergency fuel door release uh, in the event that the popper didn't work cargo net real real clean these cars 99 deville was the last year the cadillac offered the pull down on the devilles so these cars don't have um, power pull down units they never came with them i can see look at how clean even inside here is i put gas in this thing just before i do pitches like look at the anodizing I know this is like a stupid little detail, but look at the anodizing still on the filler neck. You know, usually those are all kind of surface rusty. Uh, fuel door release. Pop that grill. Hood, I should say. 4.6 liter North Star powered V8. Uh, front wheel drive, these DeVilles are. Uh, they went front wheel drive back in the 80s. The Vills were always front wheel drive after that. Um, but real, real clean, real tidy under here. You can see a lot of the original markings, you know, quality control marks on all your hoses and, you know, clips and stuff. As this car went down the assembly line, you know, somebody had to check off, like, oh, check, yep, okay. You know, and I'm sure each color was for a specific, you know, person or whatever. There was probably a story behind that. But I mean, if you really get in and look at it, there's tons of little marks everywhere. Um, but there's an absolutely smooth running North Star V8, real clean, no corrosion, no leaks. Um, I'll tell you all the service work we did when we get inside and we get this thing on the road. You just, you don't see this era Cadillac in this condition anymore. Well, let's get it on the road. All right. Behind the wheel, AC is on. We're gonna close that. This does open full or vents. Uh, but when I do videos, I like to have them closed. That way I don't get any wind noise. And I know the screen is going crazy. It's the flashes of the LED or yeah, LED display you know, versus the picture on my phone. Uh, it's not actually doing that in real life, although it drives me nuts looking through the camera at it. Anyways, so I'll give you a quick rundown of what happened to me, where I've been, what happened, why I've been AWOL, literally. Um, so starting earlier this year, um, I had a few cases where I, at first I didn't know what it was, but total in total I've had five uh, gallbladder attacks where I'd wake up in the morning it was the same thing every time I'd wake up at like three four o'clock in the morning with an excruciating pain didn't know what it was you know just couldn't couldn't get it out of my system um, but oh, after a few hours it was passed but I, I, I was in pain absolute pain couldn't do anything you know curled up in a ball third time it happened back in probably february march i went to the emergency room they did an ultrasound they said i had gallstones they said see your doctor i was fine by the time i got checked out but they said you have gallstones see your doctor your primary care i did she referred me to a uh gi doctor went and i saw a gi doctor um, about a month and a half ago and they want to do a scope on me to go down on me, like internals, I guess, and check it out. Um, but she didn't think it was a gallbladder issue. Um, that's why they wanted to do a scope. Anyways, long of the short of it, I said, okay, I, I did change my eating habits because I knew, you know, it must have been maybe something related to what I ate the night before. I couldn't pinpoint it. And I really wasn't sure if it was gallbladder because I'm no doctor. So, I didn't have an attack for like three months, four months. My next attack, the fourth one came 
uh, just the Thursday before uh, 4th of July. Woke up in the morning, excruciating pain, you know, curled up in a ball, finally went away. I said, okay. Didn't really think anything of it. Um, did some research, said, oh, you know, I had ice cream the night before. I took my daughter off of ice cream. I saw that dairy was kind of a contributing factor sometimes of gallbladder attacks. So I said, well, I'm going to avoid doing that. Well, Monday morning, the day before the 4th of July, I woke up in the most excruciating pain, like so much pain. I said to my dad, like, bring me to the hospital. I, I can't take this anymore. I was ready to just stick a pick in my chest and carve out whatever was making me feel bad. Um, went to the emergency room, thankfully not very busy. They checked me in, uh, did an ultrasound. They said, yep, gallbladder. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to take it out? Do you want to, you know, see if it goes away? I said, no, take that son of a bitch out of me. So I, I was, I was literally, I was crying in the, in the room. Like my poor father's there, you know, I'm like, dad, this is killing me. Like, like wh whatever they have to do to expedite this, get this thing out of me. So later that afternoon, got my gallbladder pulled out and all last week. I've been kind of like sore, you know, literally resting, not moving much. Finally got out around weekend time, you know, and here we are a week later almost. Um, and I'm, I'm finally moving around. I'm still a little sore. I'm watching what I'm doing. I can't really lift anything. But anyways, that's what happened. That's where I've been. So now I don't have a gallbladder. Um, I've been told by people who have had their gallbladder removed to be careful what you eat and I'm soon realizing that I don't know if it's because I'm fresh out of surgery and my stomach is getting used to it but like basically everything I've eaten not to be gross you know I'm always like cautious to be near a bathroom <laughs> but uh, I feel better knowing that the issue is gone they said my gallbladder was the worst that they've ever seen they don't know how I wasn't in 24 hour pain they said it was actually so bad that my gallbladder was like sticking to my liver which is insane anyways back to the cadillac i just wanted to give you that little update uh, i am so backed up with cars it's not even funny so I'm, I'm glad to already be back and showing you a car um this car runs out beautifully we did tons of service not tons but we did a lot of service for i guess a 2003 with 17,000 miles. Like I said, I did put seven, 800 miles on this car. I took this car up to Maine. I took a few trips in this car. Absolute beautiful riding car on the highway. A um, few things that I did do to this car was tires. Uh, I put the white wall tires on this car. Uh, it had a decent set of black walls. They were older, um, had dry rot. They were probably, you know, probably had no miles on them. Uh, but I know that's going crazy. It looks so nuts in the video um did four tires one tpms sensor wasn't reading the correct tire pressure um <laughs> so i put one new tpms sensor in it and i don't have like computers or scan tools at my shop to like redo tpms sensors so i had to send it out to have the tpms sensor flashed but well, i couldn't flash it because another one failed i said you know what just put three more in it so it's got three, you know, essentially four brand new TPMS sensors because I know one's going, another one, and now they're just checking off the list. So I said, do all of them. So they did four in total TPMS sensors. So there's no service lights uh, for the tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, what else did I do this car? Full oil change, did a cabin filter. Um, brakes on the car original phenomenal shape no pulsations really needy brakes 17,000 miles uh the only other thing that we did to this car when we got it in and um uh, it was kind of a good checkout we had it up on the lift and we noticed a little bit of coolant kind of pulled up on the bottom of the splash pan on this left side now this left side the coolant reservoir is on that side um this left front corner has your water pump as your lower radiator hose. So we kind of took the uh, air box apart and um, the lower radiator hose, the clamp that clamps it onto the thermostat housing was actually cracked. It's a steel, they're those steel spring clamps, not like the old style screw on like band clamps. 
and the clamp actually broke. Half of it was missing, fell down, was sitting on top of the um, panel. And uh, that's where it was just leaking just a little bit, but just enough. I only noticed that after I was driving it. So we did a hose, two new clamps, we did a new thermostat, and then I did a complete coolant flush on this car as well. We flushed the deck cool out of this car and we put regular green uh, Prestone 50-50 uh, coolant in it. Now, one of the things with these North Stars that I preach is coolant maintenance, you know. <laughs> The thing is, and I know I'm gonna get it in this video too. Everybody's gonna be like, oh, the North Star, the North Star, it's got the North Star. Think of it this way. This car is 20 years old. Now, granted, it's got 18,000 miles on it, but people kind of, you know, correlate North Star with like catastrophic engine failure. Yes, earlier North Stars had that. 2003, later North Stars, GM bettered the head stud, uh, the head bolt design on these cars. And that was the weak point. What would happen is you'd overheat these cars, those head studs would pull out, and it only took once or twice to do it. You heat these things up uh, warm enough, those studs would pull out of the aluminum block, you'd blow your head gasket. Like I said, 03 and later, they bettered the design. Um, geez, I'm either gonna hit this kid on the bike or these people are trying to cross the road. I think these girls are crossing the road. We'll stop, no problem. Um, and, um, um, <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh yeah. Oh, three and later they bettered the head design or head stud design, uh, to kind of alleviate that issue. But really what it was, you know, that could give you these issues is coolant. Nobody changed the coolant in these cars and that Dex cool coolant gets very, uh, corrosive when it breaks down. So we did a full cool and flush, thermostat, all that good stuff. Like I said, I've put hundreds of miles on this car. Why are we getting a check tire pressure? Oh, one of my tires is high. Okay, okay. One PSI high, unbelievable. Um, did a full cool and flush, no leaks now. This car is absolutely bone dry underneath too. Uh, no oil leaks, no valve covers, no mid seals. It's very, very dry. I'm gonna bring it back and put it on the lift and show you whoa, what it looks like under there on the lift. Uh, but she's a beautiful running and driving car. 17,826 miles on this car. Um, really a nice, nice sedan DeVille. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Sorry if this video is long kind of rambling same thing happened to me with the town cars the first video in a while and i i kind of got to get back in my rhythm again uh but this car is going up for sale any questions give me a call 978-930-1004 my name is anthony specialtymotorcars.net is my website you can check out all the still pictures uh there uh, of this car uh, any questions about shipping, I can help you get the car shipped right to your front door. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Specialty Motor Cars NH uh, to get, you know, sneak peek updates. All my Facebook people, I posted on my Facebook that I was laid up again. So, you know, they, they get that. It's easy for me to post there. It's hard for me to do that on YouTube. Um, but anyways, that's the car. Any questions? 978-930-1004. The price of this Cadillac is going to be $14,995. Bottom side here of the 2003 Cadillac DeVille. Let's see how clean this car is. Absolute time capsule condition. Uh, even on the bottom here. Very, very clean, no rust anywhere. And a super, super dry North Star. Dry tranny pan, dry oil pan. Very, very nice car. 978-930-1004. Again, any questions, give me a call. My name is Anthony. Uh, and I do want to thank all my subscribers, followers, um, I've had a lot of people reach out to me again and say, Anthony, what would happen? Where, you know, you came back, but you disappeared. Um, I'm very grateful for the amount of people that, that you know, follow me that closely. Um, and 
I will apologize right now to anybody who called me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of last week, maybe even Friday. Um, my voicemail box filled up like Monday afternoon or Tuesday. And I was just, I didn't even look at my phone for days. Like I didn't even want to be on my phone. So I know people called and couldn't leave voicemails and I feel bad. I, I there's nothing really I can do. So, you know, if you have any questions, if you called and I missed you, give me a call back. I'm back at the shop, back answering phones, whatever, texts. Um, I, I do still have a few messages and emails to catch up with, but I kind of had to hit the ground running here because cars are backing up. I've essentially been out of work for like the last three weeks, almost a month, and I haven't really been getting much done. And like I said last time, when I stop, everything stops. So I got tons of cars piling up. I got so many cars piling up, I'm gonna actually probably go through. I wasn't gonna do an official yard sale, um, but maybe some of these cars I just gotta sell off because I, I gotta move inventory. Not that I'm out of money, but I'm out of space. Like cars have backed up. You know, I, I have a, a plan, like a constant revolving wheel that as I get cars out, I get cars in. Well, the tail end of all my cars came in and nothing has been going out because I haven't been here to sell anything. So um, I have some stuff that came in. I have a uh, 91 Brome de Elegance that, that came in that I was gonna do some work on. I might just clean it up and offer it as a, you know, entry level car. I got a 99 Park Ave, same thing. Um, at Grand Marquis, I, I got stuff everywhere. So I will be getting some stuff done and some stuff is gonna come up price to sell um, you know may or may not need a little bit of tinkering uh, but we'll cross that bridge if I can get caught up enough uh, with that I do have my conversion van coming up I have another Grand Marquis coming up uh, I can't even remember I got cars everywhere anyways thanks everybody for watching sorry for rambling thanks for the love thanks for the support as always from Papa Bear and I and uh, let me know what you think down in the comments about this 2003 Cadillac DeVille. Now the tire pressure went back down. We're good. Must just be on the cusp. 978-930-1004. We'll talk to you on the next one.